Hey peeps, welcome to another video. Today it's the all the bags I've ever made and I'm including kind of like pouches and card wallets and actual wallets in this as well. I'm only including the ones that I still have in my collection. I used to make NCWs to sell and also for Patreon and I have made a lot of those that I have given away over the years as well to friends and family. I think one Christmas I decided to make nine in production as Christmas presents for all of my friends. So I have made a lot of NCWs and a couple of penny ins as well, which I don't have. Right, anyway, I can't remember how I stumbled across this pattern, but my very first bag was, oh, is this true? No. So my very first bag was actually this one. So it doesn't look like much like this but when it's full it is awesome it is giant this is a free pattern that i found on pinterest and i'll link it in the description down below i had had a bag that i bought from accessorize oh gosh when i was 26 and i literally wore that thing to death if i have a photo i'll try and include it it was green velvet kind of a similar shape to this but not as big I had an embroidered kind of peacock phoenix type thing on the front i loved it mum loved it i bought mum one she left hers in australia as i say i literally wore holes in mine i replaced it with this one probably about six years ago so yeah i had it for a good whew, uh, 18 years i used that bag a lot a lot it traveled the world with me as well and um, so i wanted something with embroidery on it that was similar two in shape to that bag and i found this this pattern on pinterest as i say i got my embroidery machine out and i think this took a week to embroider this particular piece of fabric it actually doesn't have a bottom seam the pattern comes in two pieces so what i did was draw out the outline or the stitching line of the pattern pieces i left the fabric in, intact and then i hooked it up and just went to town with all of these different embroidery designs and i love how it's come out it is nothing like i mean you can see where the inspiration came from from the original bag but it's nothing like it and it was a total experiment in embroidery as i say it took over a week and i was terrified to cut into the fabric once the embroidery had been finished because i was worried i was going to mess the bag up i do really like this pattern the only thing that i am not so keen on are these little tabby bits here i want to try and rewrite the pattern so this actually is integral and folds over because it's really difficult to get these sewn down nicely probably wouldn't be quite so difficult now but this was the first bag i ever made so yeah i also embroidered the handle and i used these kind of horseshoe rings which are probably slightly too big for the pattern piece that's in there by about quarter of an inch i got those from mcculloch and wallace i have another set which i am um, a slightly smaller and i want to make a slightly smaller version of this bag in one of the silver leathers that i have i love this thing i it's just absolutely fabulous it fits everything one of my favorite bags ever that was my first bag that i made as i say probably about six years ago i will try and put a photo up with a date because it might be seven years ago but i decided that i needed a purse to go with it and i can't remember how i stumbled across the ncw but i did and this is my first ncw it's in this chocolate covered cherry print cotton quilting cotton that i got from fabric.com the pattern is pretty much as written there is no interfacing in this thing this thing is kind of i mean there is interfacing in it but there's none of like the decoville or the stiff stuff or the violin equivalent in there which i now add it was my first time making this pattern i added another zipper in it i've actually used invisible zips because that was all i had clearly i used i used this thing i i made a purse to go with my new bag and i was going to use it and i i love it I absolutely love it. I went on to make a lot more NCWs. I went on to do an NCW sewing tutorial video because I really liked this purse, but I thought there were some ways that I could sew it that was slightly easier for me. I really am pleased with those tweaks that I've made to it. Lots of you guys, it's, the NCW series is still my best performing video on the channel i think a lot of you guys found me through that and <laughs> thank you for staying for all the waffle and the clothes making but yeah this was my very first ncw and like i say 
it's completely squishable completely squishable i can't remember the order that my i've made the rest of these bags in so i'm just going to show you them as they come up but i remember that the this was my first ncw and that was my first handbag as i say i've made many more ncws since this is one of the ones that i actually used as the advert for the ncw class that I taught when I still had my shop in Apps Heath. It was a day class because these things take me about four hours to make, five for cutting everything out. I've made so many of them that it's a really quick process and I thought a day's class would be fine. And we all got them finished, but oh, that was stressful. That was stressful. My first ever attempt at teaching a class. Yeah, <laughs> it was stressful. Then I, I got asked by Claire from Beautiful Things if I would come and teach a class at her place in Essex which was amazing and it was the NCW and we did that in two days. It was brilliant and I've done a couple of those now. I've done a couple of Annette classes. I think I've done three classes in total at Beautiful Things HQ but it was a really lovely experience and just cemented the fact that I really do enjoy teaching and gave me the courage to start doing the retreats that I now run. So third retreat is just about to take place in a couple of weeks time and I have just announced the dates for the October retreat as well which will all be linked in the description down below. So this NCW is much better it's 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 stiffer it won't it's got the stiff stuff in the I mean not it's not it's still kind of bendy on the top but it's not like crumple crumple crumpable crumple crumbly crumpled crumpable as <laughs> words are hard it's not as, as squishy there you go <laughs> as the last one I really really like this one I haven't used this one in ages actually I might have to kind of get this one out I still make my NCWs in pretty much the same way as I have made this one I think I would do one tweak to it which I am considering doing another class on but I really love these and I always make wrist straps to go with them because I do sometimes use these as evening purses which you will see in a minute. Then I have one of my favourite ones, this is the Rainbow Cork. This is actually held up really really well. I went for navy and some of the rainbow stripe fabric that I've made a very loud dress out of on the inside. It does look awesome. I have also, which I don't seem to have down here with me, but I also have a shoulder strap for this thing. So you can have a wrist strap on it and because I put D-rings in both sides, you can put a shoulder strap on and you can use this as an evening bag because this does actually fit a decent chunk of stuff so I can get my big phone in here and I also managed to get a compact and then my all my cards money and stuff like that and then with a shoulder strap I can wear a crossbody as an evening bag I really do like the NCW and I currently have my parrot one in rotation now the parrot one has a flip lock on it in the iridescent rainbow hardware I also have the shoulder strap for it so with the shoulder strap on it you can wear it crossbody like so it's it really convenient for nights out so i used to when i still went on nights out this is how this is what i would take with me because i can fit a lippy a compact phone cards wallet and money in here not wallet this is the wallet phone cards and money in here so i love this thing and as i say i pretty much use an, an NCW daily. I don't have any other wallets. I did have a Mulberry Daria wallet, which I loved, but it wasn't quite big enough for everything that I wanted to carry around with me. I don't know why, where the need to carry all the stuff comes from, but yeah, it wasn't quite big enough. So I've actually sold my Mul Mulberry Daria. Now I pretty much exclusively use NCWs. I am going to be making myself a Rosy and Roxy wallet to go with the new Annette bags that I've made because this does fit into the Annette bags but it is quite a chunky wallet especially the way that I fill it up so yeah there is a sew along for this if you'd like to follow along and make your own and I will link it up here and then also in the description down below. I don't very often make small bags but if I did the NCW definitely doesn't fit in so I made myself this tiny little card wallet. It's by Nosy Pepper and I did it in this holographic kind of faux snakeskin vinyl. There is a sew along for this one as well. Not that you need a sew along, but I was going away on holiday and wanted to put up some videos whilst I was away and this was a really quick one to do. Actually this fits in four cards and cash if you want it. You can put, yeah, four cards and cash if you want it and it will go then go into one of my smaller purses with my phone, lipstick, 
compact that means I don't have to take my whole NCW with me but if I want to take a bigger bag than the NCW I um, use this. I don't use it very often because I haven't been going anywhere very very much recently for obvious reasons but yeah I think it's really cute and it's a really good stocking stuffer as well it's not a lengthy process making this thing so very good stocking stuffer. Christmas in July. <laughs> this is one of the small bags that I was talking about this is the Swoon Mabel bag but with the flap extended over the front to kind of try and emulate the Chloe Nile bag. This pattern is a free pattern and it was written for the use of the Pellon like Decoville super super stiff stuff. So I've stored this in a drawer and it's gotten quite squished. I need to probably stuff this and store it flatter. I really wanted something that looked like the Chloe Nile so I've tried to put on the decorative elements, the kind of side straps and then this bag hardware that I got from Etsy I will link in the description down below. You guys wanted to sew along for this bag and I did it and I made this bag in silver and I hated how it turned out. I hated the sew along. This is not something that I wanted to put out there so uh, my niece actually has that bag I don't know if she still does or not but I want to kind of revisit this because I love this hardware I think it's awesome but I do think I need to use a different base to try and make something like the Chloe Nile or maybe even try and design one of my own. One of the things I love about this bag though is Porgs and R2D2 so yeah it's it's very squished this poor little bag very very squished indeed i think it would have probably been better with foam and if it had been better looked after as well i don't think it enjoyed the move being stuffed into a box and squished with other things it definitely didn't enjoy the birthing process with this bag i did film the entire sew along and make a bag out of this for as the patreon peeps voted for but i hated how it turned out so i need to revisit it and and come up with a better way of using this hardware which i will do i promise at some point. This is a cute bag though. Next we've got another one of my experiments. This is for a laptop sleeve. It does have D-rings on the side so you can put on a shoulder strap which I do have here. I've done a kind of double-sided shoulder strap for this one. I like how this has turned out. I do use this. It does protect my laptop but it's not perfect and I want to revisit it. I love how it looks. I really like this detail down the bottom. I kind of borrowed this detail from the Chris W Designs Luna bag and the construction method of, the, of it as well which I thought was it's a very clever construction method. I'll show you that one in a second. It actually has two compartments inside and this foam is actually free floating. The thing that I am not so keen on is the side finishes. I thought I'd come up with a really clever way of doing it and it didn't quite work and I need to rethink it because it's not quite right but I do really like how this looks and it is really useful and it does protect my laptop when I go places and as I say because I've put these removable handles this removable strap on I can use it with the other bag that I made in this configuration so I have a matching set and this fits inside this one so this is the Annette handbag and I made this for the retreat that I was hoping was going to go ahead last year but couldn't. I have done some tweaks to the inside of this one. So I've added a elasticated pocket underneath the zipper pocket. I have added Chris W Designs Pocket Supplement A which I tend to add to every bag I possibly can because it's awesome and then I've also added another foam padded pocket for the laptop sleeve. If this bag is full that works. If you've only got your laptop in there it doesn't work because it just kind of falls over. So I am not teaching this method at the retreat coming up in a couple of weeks time because it, it was an experiment. I do like this bag. I wear this bag a lot. I really enjoy this bag. It fits an awful lot in. I wouldn't mind making a handbag size one to match. I like matching sets. That might sound ridiculous but I do. But yeah I do really like this one and I do use this one a lot when I'm going backwards and forwards to London because as I say I can fit my laptop in here as well as everything else and then I take a smaller bag with me for my day-to-day -day use but this is great for as a kind of like travel bag and it is called the commuter tote so yeah, this is the Swoon Annette commuter tote with many additional pockets on the inside and I'm really pleased with how this one has come out. I really like the Annette bag. 
I like it a lot. This is the, I think the second large commuter tote that I've made. Again, we've got the pocket A supplement in the back there, but that's the only internal pocket I've done. I have done the kind of two-sided straps and I have actually put on the decorative element on the front. I don't actually, I, I like the look of it, but I don't actually like the raw edges that are left on vinyl. So I have stopped using that. And I now use like long johns or decorative clasps because I think it looks much nicer. It's just my personal preference. And this one I have as a matching set. And I've also made one that's very similar to this with a different tapestry on it, which my sister-in-law has. I think she uses it as a work bag. I don't know if she still does, but she, def um, she definitely used it as a work bag for quite a while. So yes, I have a matching set. I even made a matching NCW to go with this one, but unfortunately Chiana decided that the faux leather was the perfect scratching post for her nails and she ruined it. I love my cat, I love my cat, I love my cat. But yes, I have a matching set and I do sometimes use it like that. So I'll, you know, if I'm traveling, I'll use this for the traveling backwards and forwards and I'll use this for when I arrive. I love these bags, they are, they are awesome. Which is why I have so many of them. <laughs> so I haven't made a bag in a really long time. The last bag that I made was this one then with the retreat coming up i was trying to decide which pattern to make i was deciding between the companion carpet bag or the annette bag and i decided to go for the annette bag so this was the first bag i've made recently i wanted to get my eye in i wanted to try and remember how things went together if there were any tips and tricks i had for making this bag construction slightly easier this is the tan mora leather from emmeline bags i got it via so hot i know they're out of stock of this color at the moment but they do get it back in to stock and then I have lined it with and this is the current bag that I'm using <laughs> I've lined it with a leafy print canvas that I got from fabrics galore at one of the shows quite a few years ago now I think I was planning on making cushions with it but I it's ended up in my bag making stash and it looks awesome I'm gonna make myself a matching Roxy wallet with it I've got the long bar clasp to go across the top in the antique brass I much prefer the look of these long johns to the decorative element just because as I say I don't like the raw edges on the decorative element when you're using vinyl and I tend to use vinyl at least in some part of my bags yeah absolutely love this one really pleased that I've made it only thing that I would change is I would add two more purse feet to the bottom I only put four on I would like it with six and I just didn't have six in my stash and I didn't want to buy anything for this bag I love how this has come out absolutely gorgeous I'm using this currently then I was scrolling through I think one of the bag making groups on Facebook I can't remember which which one it was but I saw this image and it was absolutely gorgeous and I stupidly just took an image a, a screenshot of the photo not the person's name so I really don't know who made this bag but it inspired me greatly so I now have my very own version of this oh my goodness this bag fought me every step of the way. So this is an upholstery weight vinyl from Textile Express and it is lovely and gorgeous but it is super super stiff and did not want to be turned into a bag and it just it did fight me every step of the way. I'm really pleased with how it's come out. I'm really glad that I've made it. Did add the six feet at the bottom. Mum has very kindly quilted the front and the back for me. Well, not that there is a front and a back because it's basically the same, but I love this bag. All of the ones that I've just shown you have got the top zip to close them. I hate that part of it, especially on this one because it does get very bulky in this area here. So the zip is not the easiest thing to open and close, which is why I have redesigned the lining to have a recess zip in it. And mum has made herself one of these with a recess zip and she's currently making her second one with some fussy cut quilting cotton and the tan mo mora leather, which looks awesome. She's currently making another one of those with another recess zip. And the next time I make one of these, cause I think I'm gonna make another one in black with the iridescent hardware, I will do a recess zip on mine. I've also added a elasticated pocket here just because mum wanted more pockets. So I drafted more pockets for her and glad that I did, but yes absolutely love this so glad that I've made it this fabric was actually the lo very lovely Susan had bought on patreon quite a lot of 
NCWs. I think I ended up making nine for her and one penny in. I did make two penny ins, but one got lost in the post. So I ended up refunding for her for that one, which was so sad. It was a really pretty one. Yeah, Susan bought the fabric for this one and she bought and had it sent to my house directly. And then there was so much left. I offered to send it over to her and she said, no, 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 you keep it. It's for you. So thank you very much, Susan. We got two more bags out of this. She had a large NCW with the rose gold hardware. Mum and I have both gotten a net. So thank you, Susan. It's very much appreciated. It is a gorgeous bag. Can't wait to use it in this summer. So the second retreat I did, we made the Swoon Carter bag and I love this. It's very reminiscent of Mulberry, the Mulberry Alexa. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. My battery's dying. Two secs. And I'm back. So the Swoon Carter bag, as I say, very, very much like the Mulberry Alexa bag. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's got a really interesting construction as well, which I really enjoyed. I taught it at the second retreat that I did. This fabric on the inside is all the way from South Africa from my very lovely pattern swap partner, Jessica. And then this one on the inside is from Canada. Somebody sent me this one as well and I can't remember your name. I'm so sorry, but I absolutely love this bag. I <laughs> got my matching little key fob in there because I like to have a matching key fob for all my bags. I've done that for all my recent bags as well. The only thing with this one is it's quite a small little bag so I would like to size this one up probably about 25% and make a slightly larger version of this in the tan more leather if I have enough left because I have given some to mum. I think I should but I love this. This fabric again was from Textile Express. I bought some of this to make myself a bag and then I decided it would also look amazing as a jacket so I have enough to make a ziggy jacket and then again the very lovely Susan really liked it so she bought herself some for me to make an NCW with and again she has let me keep the remainder of it and it was a really good sort of like meter of it left. It's from Textile Express. This colorway isn't available anymore I'm sorry but it is really pretty. The only thing I wish I'd done with this one is use iridescent rainbow hardware on it rather than the nickel but the nickel does look gorgeous and I did consider making because I have more of this fabric I did consider making the exact same bag with the iridescent hardware and gifting this one to somebody but I can't do that because of the fabric I used for the lining because it was a gift from one of my KB pattern swap partners I was just like no I, I can't I can't give it away <laughs> it's too nice it's mine <laughs> so I have kept this one. I love this one. It is gorgeous. Along the way, I have made myself this little pouch. It's kind of like one of those ones with the corners, um, sort of like, it's, it, it looks, you, you sew the corners at an angle to make it slightly flat at the bottom. I've no idea what I was making this for. It was, I had some of this fabric left. It just happens to be the perfect length for all of my pens. So this is my pencil case, which is far too big for a pencil case. And I really shouldn't carry this much stuff around with me, but we all know how I feel about stationery. So I've made myself this tiny little pouch. Well, tiny little pouch, super ginormous pencil case, and I love it, absolutely love it, and I use this daily. Next up we have my second Celine bag. I don't have my first one of these anymore. I made it in a combination that you'll see in a second to kind of see if I liked the Celine bag, and turns out I loved it. So I actually treated myself to two leather skins from Pittards in this forest green colorway. This is the Savannah Canvas Drill, from Lady McElroy. As I say, this is the second one of these that I've made. I taught this in my very first sewing retreat. Yeah, I love how it's turned out. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I do use this bag frequently. It tends to be this one or my Carter Messenger bag, but I love it. I absolutely love it. It's gorgeous. I have made a third one of these that I did for the sew along. That one I gifted to the very lovely Michelle because Michelle has sent me and mum and dad so many treats over the years. So I wanted to send something back to her. I've sent her a photo album because I know she's scrapbooks. I sent, so I sent her a photo album that I'd created but not matted so that she could do that one. And then I've also sent her the this bag. I have a photo of it. And like I say, this, this sew along for this bag as well is using those fabrics. And I really love those fabric combination together. It was a bronze leather that I used the, for the sleeves of my Kelly Anorak. And then this kind of map 
print canvas that I got from Etsy. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love that one so much. I do have a penny in cut out of those fabrics that I still need to make up, but the penny in is one of those ones you really have to be in the mood for sewing because it's a monumental effort to get those ones done. But this is my Celine bag and it's definitely one of my most used most used bags. I added feet to the bottom of this one, which is not something that the pattern calls for, but I prefer it. I love this one. Chris W Designs was trialing out the video tutorials that she'd done for the Penny In, and I got in on the pattern test for that. She'd already done the pattern, the pattern was there, but she'd re-recorded video clips of, of of putting the pattern together because it is as I say quite an intense pattern and I got in on the pattern test for that one so I used this combination of fabrics which I love but I just it's not really something that works with my wardrobe I should have used a different combination so my sister-in-law has that one the penny in is like the NCW on steroids it's a brilliant travel wallet because there's so many compartments and stuff and again you can wear it cross body you don't need another bag with you it'll fit your phone in, in there if you don't stuff it too full it'll also fit your compact and your lipstick but if you can stuff it very full of other things but yeah I think it's a really good travel wallet as well because it does fit a passport and there's lots of compartments for the different types of money that you know your, your original country money and the money of the country you're going to kind of thing so yeah in my head it's kind of like a travel wallet which is another reason that I am so looking forward to finally getting the impetus to sew up the bronze leather and matte print fabric one that I have got cut out and raring to go so that's the last of the handbags and the very last bag I have to show you is one of my proudest makes ever it is huge this is the Chris W Designs Luna bag in the largest size. This is a beast. Believe it or not, it's actually a lot easier to make bigger bags than smaller bags. At least I found that. I made a one and a half inch double sided strap for it. It has a slip here that you can put your, if you've got a trolley, uh, like a, a, a suitcase with a handle on it, you put this over the handle so that it stays in place. If you don't want it for that, you can sew across the bottom and make that slip pocket. It has a magnetic pocket at the front here, which I use, oh, I've got a mask in there, um, but I also use it for my passport and stuff like that, because when I travel, this is also the perfect size for hand luggage, for cabin luggage. You can use this as your hand luggage I use a NCW as a crossbody and that will be it for me so that I don't have like a handbag as well the inside has the pocket a supplement a zipper pocket and then it has and I, I probably need to refill this but it has like a, a base I've just used cardboard in this or two layers of grey board stuck together but the pattern does recommend like ply plywood or something lightweight like that that will help the bottom stay in place I have lost one of its feet so I need to kind of see if I can get back in there to reattach one of its feet. But other than that, oh, and side pockets with the kind of like drawstring on them so you can fit your water bottle and stuff in there. I love how this has turned out. This is an expensive bag to make. The interfacing and hardware are around 95 pounds and that doesn't take into account the fabric that um, you need to make it as well. This is the combination of fabric that I did my first Celine in that I have gifted to Big Bird's mum actually. I got the canvas floral from Lanzarote and the green vinyl from eBay. All of the hardware is Emmeline bag hardware. The only thing I couldn't get were these double cord locks in rose gold so I went for clear because otherwise they were all really bright colours which I wasn't a big fan of. And that was one of the reasons that I waited so long to make this bag because I wanted rose gold cord locks on it. The very lovely Erica Lee has sent me a $25 Emmeline bag voucher to go towards the hardware because she was like you need to make this bag and it turns out the impetus that I needed to make this bag was going on holiday to Croatia and then wanting some hand luggage two days in advance. So it's actually a really easy sew, it's really well, well written pattern. Chris W Designs has actually asked me to do a sew along for this. This bag does come in three sizes. I do have enough of the, both of these fabrics left that I could do the medium and smallest size and have a proper set, which might sound bonkers but it's something that I do like. As you've seen I've got matching sets of other bags. This is a great weekend bag 
it does get heavy this is not something that you want to fill up with all of the stuff that you want for a long weekend and then have to get on the underground with ask me how i know i would say this is the ideal weekend bag if you are driving somewhere and you want to pack fairly light but you don't want a suitcase the next size down would be a great gym bag and then the smallest size is actually a lovely handbag so i really really like this bag it is giant it is a very satisfying make though it is an expensive bag to make because of all of the interfacing and hardware that is required in it but the pattern's written really really well at some point i will get around to doing the sew along for it i nearly forgot the bag that i use every single day is this one so this is my loose interpretation of the dior book tote it's not exactly the same and I was going to try and release a pattern for this, or at least do it. I mean, it's going to be a free pattern because it's literally all rectangles. But this didn't quite turn out the way I wanted it to, and I want to make some tweaks to it. So I'm going to remake another one of these. But I use this every single day to transport all of my stuff. So I've got laptop and then stuff in there, down from the main house, down to the sewing room for my work day so this is like exactly what the book tote would be used for like shoving everything in then having a pretty if i was going out to an office having a pretty handbag and then this is all for the stuff there will be a sew along coming for this at some point in the future when i get around to making my second one because i do want to make another one but yeah nearly forgot my book tote that is it that's all the handmade bags and purses and pouches that i currently own i have made more as i've said and given a few away i have made a lot of ncws and sold those over the years a lot of patreon peeps have had ncws from me as well and i have made a lot of ncws as gifts i kind of wish i'd kept a, a like a running total of how many ncws i've made but i would definitely say it's over 150 now it's it's been there's a there's been a lot of ncws a lot a lot i have made the blue collar aster bag and i did that as a commission for a client and i love how that turned out and i have all the hardware sitting to the side ready for me to make myself one of those aster bags as well because it is just absolutely gorgeous i love it love it so much so that one's going to get made at some point as well and as i think you guys know if you've been watching the waffles i'm currently working on my version of the chloe pixie bag using the moments designs grace bag the zipper and foam arrived this afternoon so i'm itching to get on with that but i've got so much editing to do so it'll probably be what i work on tomorrow i really really enjoy making bags i think if i had if money was no object i would still buy bags but I really enjoy the different processes that go into making bags. One of the reasons that we make bags at the sewing retreats is because bags always fit. <laughs> there is no fitting required. So that is one of like my reasons behind picking bags as the project that we do during the retreats. Also, they should be achievable in sort of two and a half, three days, which is how long the retreats are now for sewing wise. I have a giant list of bags that I want to make. One of my best friends is the very lovely Erica Lee of Lavender and Twine fame and she is coming to the retreat in a couple of weeks and she's staying a little bit early and a little bit afterwards and she has agreed to a sewing date down in the studio and we are going to try and make Harith think I've said that right bags. Erica Lee and I bought a set of five fabrics when she came for the very first retreat. We bought it from the, the Isle of Wight. She's, she's not made it up in a bag yet. I've had it sitting in my stash. We were going to be making something else and we are going to now be using it to make the Hariath and I'm so so excited. I'm so so excited. So I have loads of her bags that I want to make. As I say the blue color Aster. I want to try and do the Carter bag slightly larger. I have got some Aura I can never say the name of this company, some Aura Rosa designs as well that I would love to make. There's another bag that I would like to try and design myself and see if I can make that work. I want to make something similar to the Lady Dior bag because I have three sets of hardware in different colours to do that one and the bag itself is fine it's the handles that are the issue so i've got all these ideas and and all these plans for all these bags i have so much faux leather i have so much bag making hardware stashed away i just need to get on and get them done and i'm so so glad that my sojo seems to be coming back and my bag sojo seems to be coming back as well because there was a very long break between making this one and then making these two so I'm very, very glad, very glad indeed that the 
bag making bug has bitten again and I am enjoying it as much as I am. So I hope you guys have enjoyed seeing all the different bags that I've made. Everything that I can list in the description down below will be listed in the description down below. If there is a sew along I will have put a card up to it and I will also list the sew along down below as well. So let me know in the comments down below which is your favourite of my makes. Are you interested in making bags? Do you make bags yourself? Having seen this video would you want to make bags yourself? I uh, would love to know what you guys think. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.